scientists deliberately unleashed one billion ants into lifeless desert wasteland in Inner Mongolia. To put that in perspective, that's enough ants to cover multiple football fields in a living, moving carpet. Within just weeks, something impossible started happening. Dead soil that hadn't grown anything in decades began transforming before their eyes. Keep watching because what you're about to discover could either be humanity's greatest ecological breakthrough or the beginning of something that spiraled completely out of control. Did you know that every single year, 12 million hectares of productive land, an area larger than the entire country of Guatemala, turns into lifeless desert? That's happening right now, and it's accelerating. We're not talking about sand dunes expanding naturally. We're talking about farmland, grasslands, and forests that used to feed millions of people becoming completely barren, unable to support any life whatsoever. The soil in these dead zones is so compacted and lifeless that it lacks the most basic building blocks of an ecosystem. No earthworms, no insects, no microbes, nothing. Just hard, cracked earth that rain can't penetrate and seeds can't grow in. Climate change is making this worse turning once productive regions into wastelands at a pace scientists didn't predict even a decade ago. Here's the terrifying part. The United Nations warns that if soil degradation continues at the current rate, we have less than 60 harvests left. 60. That means within our lifetime, we could face a global food crisis that threatens billions of people, and conventional solutions aren't working fast enough. For decades, countries have tried to fix desertification with massive tree planting campaigns. China's Great Green Wall Project, one of the most ambitious reforestation efforts in history, struggled for years with survival rates as low as 15%. That means for every 100 trees planted, 85 died within the first few years. The Soviet Union's virgin lands campaign in the 1950s tried to convert vast steppes into farmland. Instead of creating productive agriculture, they turned millions of hectares into dust bowls that are still recovering today. The ecological collapse around the Aral Sea once the world's fourth largest lake, demonstrates just how catastrophic these failures can be. What was supposed to boost agriculture instead created a toxic desert that spread for hundreds of miles. The pattern is clear. You can't just plant trees or dump fertilizer on dead land and expect it to come back to life. Every attempted quick fix ignores the fundamental problem. The soil itself is dead. Without a living ecosystem underground, nothing can survive above ground. Traditional reforestation without preparing the soil first results in 80 to 90% seedling mortality. You're essentially trying to grow trees in concrete. Chemical fertilizers might give a temporary boost, but they actually destroy whatever microscopic life remains in the soil, making the long-term problem worse. Irrigation megaprojects sound promising until you realize they drain aquifers that took thousands of years to fill and cause salt buildup in the soil that poisons it permanently. Biochar and compost amendments work on small scales, but they're far too expensive and slow for the massive restoration needed. We're talking about billions of hectares worldwide. Synthetic soil substitutes can cost over $500 per cubic meter. To restore even one square kilometer would cost tens of millions of dollars, making it economically impossible for the scale we need. Every single one of these solutions addresses symptoms, but ignores the real issue. Dead soil lacks the living ecosystem infrastructure needed for regeneration. That's when scientists in China had a radical idea. What if instead of forcing life onto dead land from above, they could resurrect it from below? The target site was 50,000 hectares of completely lifeless former agricultural land in Inner Mongolia. This wasn't just degraded soil. This was biological death. Soil samples showed zero earthworms, zero insects, zero detectable microbes. Nothing lived there. It was chosen specifically because if ants could bring this land back to life, they could work anywhere. The vision was revolutionary. Use nature's underground engineers to do what humans couldn't. Instead of imposing restoration from above with expensive machinery and manual labor, let biology drive the transformation. The project would prove that for the two billion hectares of degraded drylands across the planet, there might finally be a solution that actually works. Here's how it works. Ants are among nature's most powerful soil engineers. A single colony can dig 300 kilometers of tunnels per hectare, aerating compacted earth that rain and roots can't penetrate. As they tunnel, they transport organic matter underground, dead insects, plant material, seeds, creating nutrient hotspots throughout the soil. Their waste and the decomposing materials they bring down 
seed the soil with essential microbes that have been absent for decades. Each colony processes about 200 kilograms of material annually, with billions of ants across 50,000 hectares. That's a collective impact of 20,000 tons of organic matter being processed and distributed underground every year. To put that in perspective, achieving the same result with human workers and excavators would require 10,000 people operating machinery 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The species selected were native harvester ants with proven soil engineering capabilities. These ants naturally create extensive tunnel networks and have evolved specifically for harsh, dry environments. The timeline was ambitious but achievable. 18 to 24 months for measurable soil regeneration to begin. Creating a billion ants isn't as simple as it sounds. The project required massive ant breeding facilities covering 200,000 square meters, about 28 football fields of climate-controlled colonies. These aren't just warehouses full of ants. They're sophisticated queen cultivation centers producing 50,000 reproductive females every single month. Each queen can establish a new colony, but keeping them alive and reproducing at scale required solving problems no one had tackled before. Specialized transport containers had to maintain colony cohesion during deployment. Ants recognize colony members by scent, and mixing colonies triggers warfare. Every container had to keep queens and workers from different breeding lines separated until strategic release. The distribution network used 500 strategic release points across the entire project zone. Scientists calculated optimal spacing to prevent territorial conflicts while ensuring tunnel networks would eventually connect. Each release point had to be timed perfectly with seasonal conditions. Too early, and the ants would die in late winter cold. Too late, and they'd struggle through summer heat before establishing. The monitoring system deployed 10,000 soil sensors, tracking moisture levels, organic content, and microbial activity in real time. Satellite imaging tracked vegetation response across the entire 50,000 hectare. Mobile research stations, 15 facilities housing over 200 scientists, moved across the zone, collecting data and adjusting release strategies. Weather modification infrastructure included cloud seeding capabilities to provide strategic moisture pulses after ant colonies established, helping them survive the critical first months. The total infrastructure investment reached $280 million over three years, making this one of the most expensive ecological experiments in history. If this works, and early results suggest it might, the implications are staggered. Economic transformation alone could bring $12 billion in restored agricultural productivity over 20 years. The project would create 45,000 direct jobs in ant cultivation, monitoring, and land management, transforming a region that had been economically dead. The proof of concept has already attracted over $2 billion in international ecological restoration investment. Countries watching closely see this as a potential blueprint for their own degraded lands. Tourism potential is real. The world's largest ant park could draw ecological researchers and visitors fascinated by nature-based engineering at this scale. Carbon sequestration matters too. Restored soil could capture 5 million tons of carbon dioxide annually, equivalent to taking over a million cars off the road permanently. For the two billion degraded hectares across Asia, Africa, and Australia. This represents a global solution to both food security and climate change. What's remarkable is the environmental cascade that follows. Ant restored soil enables native plant recolonization without human planting, as tunnels aerate the earth and organic matter accumulates. Seeds that have been dormant for Years suddenly have conditions to germinate. Water cycle restoration improves dramatically. Soil structure increases rainfall infiltration by 60%, meaning less runoff and more water stored underground. Biodiversity returns naturally. Within five years, scientists project over 200 species of insects, birds, and small mammals could re-establish in areas that were completely lifeless. Regional climate moderation follows. Restored vegetation reduces temperature extremes by three to five degrees Celsius, making the entire region more livable. Eventually, this could restore cropland capable of feeding 500,000 people. This represents a paradigm shift, proof that nature-based solutions can outperform pure engineering at massive scale. In spring 2024, phase one launched with 100 million ants released across 5,000 hectares. Within eight months, results shocked even the most optimistic scientists. Soil organic matter increased by 340%, a transformation rate nobody predicted. 
Areas that had been biological deserts for decades showed measurable life. An unexpected discovery accelerated everything. The ants attracted beetles and spiders that hadn't been seen in the region for years. These insects, drawn to the ant activity, began their own ecosystem engineering, breaking down larger organic materials, creating additional tunnels, spreading microbes. The restoration was happening faster than models predicted because nature was compounding the effects. But there were concerning signs too. Winter colony mortality hit 30 percent, higher than projections. Genetic analysis revealed something unexpected. Released ants were hybridizing with previously unknown wild ant species. Scientists hadn't even known these wild ants existed in the supposedly lifeless zone. What other organisms were hiding underground? And how would they interact with billions more ants? Project leader Dr. Chen Wei made a statement that captured the tension perfectly. We've proven the concept works, but we've also opened Pandora's box. Phase two is scheduled for spring 2026, the release of the remaining 900 million ants. But delays are mounting. Breeding targets are only 60% met due to queen production bottlenecks. The infrastructure can't scale fast enough to hit the billion ant goal on schedule. Political interference complicates everything. Regional government officials, seeing early success, are demanding faster results for propaganda purposes. They want to showcase the project internationally before the science is ready. Scientists are divided. Some want to halt expansion pending thorough ecological risk assessment of the unexpected hybridization and faster-than-expected changes. Current funding only extends through 2026. Without continued investment, even monitoring the existing 100 million ants becomes impossible. The scientific community worldwide is split. The journal Nature published both celebration and condemnation editorials in the same month, reflecting deep disagreement about whether this represents genius or recklessness. Australia and Kazakhstan have expressed serious interest in replicating this at massive scale across their own degraded drylands. The UN Environmental Program is calling for international oversight protocols before any expansion. Conservation groups are denouncing the project as ecological recklessness and hubris, human manipulation of nature at a scale we don't fully understand. Surprising indigenous land management groups have offered support, citing traditional knowledge of insect-driven restoration that modern science is only now rediscovering. But the insurance industry has refused to underwrite similar projects anywhere in the world, classifying them as unquantifiable risk. A black market is emerging. Several nations are attempting to acquire ant breeding stock for unauthorized programs raising the terrifying possibility of uncontrolled releases without scientific oversight. Here's where we are. Scientists have demonstrated they can resurrect dead earth using nature's own engineers. 100 million ants have transformed 5,000 hectares in ways that seemed impossible just two years ago. But those same ants are evolving in unexpected ways, hybridizing with unknown species spreading faster than predicted. Phase two means releasing 900 million more ants across 10 times more land. The potential is enormous. Prove this works at 50,000 hectares, and you have a blueprint for saving billions of hectares of degraded land worldwide. Food security for hundreds of millions of people carbon sequestration at climate-changing scale, economic transformation for impoverished regions. But the risks are real. What happens if a billion ants trigger an uncontrolled population explosion that spreads beyond the target zone? What if they outcompete native species trying to naturally recolonize? What if the hybridization creates super colonies nobody can control? Scientists don't have definitive answers because nothing like this has ever been attempted. So here's the critical question. What would you do? Would you gamble on releasing 900 million more ants to potentially save billions of hectares of dead land worldwide? Or would you play it safe, stick with what we know, and let desertification continue winning? Drop your answer in the comments below and hit subscribe.